They say people in glass houses shouldn't throw rocks. And to that, I say, ooh, basalt. We're here today at the Twin Sisters site to talk about the Frenchman Springs member of the Wanapum Basalts, which some dates have put at about 15.3 to 15.6 million years based on some of the individual flows that make up the Frenchman Springs. However, the overlying Rosa member, which is supposedly younger, was recently revised to about 15.8 million years and obviously the Frenchman Springs has to be older than that, so it may be somewhere between 15.8 to 15.9 million years old, with a whole lot of basalt coming out in a very short period of time. Because some of these flows, which extend across the Columbia River behind me, these can be up to 230 meters thick. And those include the, from oldest to youngest, Palouse Falls, Ginkgo, Silver Falls, Sand Hollow, Sentinel Gap, and Lion's Ferry. Some of those names might sound familiar to some of you from Eastern Washington. The Ginkgo Flow, for example, is where the petrified wood at Ginkgo uh, Petrified Forest State Park is found. Lion's Ferry is uh, up the Snake River. With all these massive basalts, it may be no surprise that the Frenchman Springs member reached the Washington coast when it erupted. Seasoned Better Noah basalt viewers will probably realize that we have a entablature up top and a colonnade down below, which is an erosional remnant from the Ice Age floods. And over here, there's more Frenchman Springs that extends further inland away from the Columbia River where we have, this is all the same entablature as Twin Sisters and the same colonnade under, underlying it. We'll get up a little closer and see what kind of rocks we're looking at here. I left my hammer in the car because this is a sort of protected site. Don't really want to crack any rocks open, but we have a fresh face here of a little piece. There's a small weathering rind around the outside here. And as you can see, there are no big crystals in there, unlike the rosa above it. We're back to an aphiric basalt black that weathers kind of gray. The columns can be a little reddish in some areas. Oh, we're back to basalt with uh, vesicles in it. Uh, no obvious... Uh... Oh, there's a little guy here. I'm not sure what he is, but that's actually a, might be a plagioclase or something in there. So the Frenchman Springs has kind of variable plagioclase, unlike the Rosa, which is uniform. This can vary between scarce to abundant, basically. There's a lot of these flat elongated divots in the colonnade, which I thought at first might be vesicles. There's some kind of roundish looking parts of it. But for the most part, they're along planes that connect to one another. So I guess it's kind of like the Rosa, where there's planes of weakness. They're a little more defined over here and connected. Where I think because this place is wind blasted and sand blasted so much, it's just taking those micro failings in the rock and taking advantage of those and digging those out first. I, you know, I throw around numbers like, oh, it's 230 meters high, and you know, there's five flows. What is easy to lose sight of is that those 230 meters aren't just in one area right here. You can trace the Frenchman Springs basalts, let's see, starting with the colonnade from Twin Sisters. You can trace that across the river. It's right around there all the way down. It gets buried underneath the basalts on the far side. But it goes in every direction as far as the eye can see. Or does it? Yeah, it does. Or as far as it outcrops. You know, that's a lot of basalt. As we leave the Frenchman Springs member with the sisters looming over my shoulder, I hope you'll join me next time as we get to better know a basalt.
Maybe I should do a separate video for each member of the Frenchman Springs members and the other big Wanapum basalts. Because, you know, they're all good basalts.